r slash ask women zesta clothes trip 527 says what got rid of your acne that never came back viv 928 says different 0.1 percent art spreadsels says tretinoin help me reverse age 2 tanksendant says i've been using the beauty of josian collection it took a few weeks of consistent use and my skin getting used to the new product but it definitely worked for me. At first it made my skin kind of sticky, but now it doesn't. The clearer my skin got the less sticky it would be after use lol it was weird. Other benefits are, that it's not too expensive, easy to get on Amazon and the bottles are pretty. Celestial Zero says. Birth Control. The Pistol Light 99 says. Pregnancy. Purple Cut 6890 says. After years of dealing with painful acne and trying a lot of treatment, a nurse suggested I tried to stop dairy. I completely stopped dairy and my acne disappeared for good. After years of being acne free, I started consuming dairy products again, and sure enough, my acne returned. More Cauliflower 913 says. Aging I'm happy to be 24 years old. Looking forward to be 30 acne is getting less each year. My teenage years were a total nightmare. Frogwebkin777 says. Tretinoin, eating healthy, staying hydrated. Just Samarando04 says. I've struggled with hormonal acne my whole life. My skin was 100% clear, while on birth control, but the other side effects were too much to bear, and I had to get off it. I used dim supplements for a lengthy amount of time and those seemed to work well till they didn't randomly. I went back birth control for about 6 months, my skin was good again but of course I couldn't handle the other side effects, so I got off. My skin went nuts. Worst acne in my adult life, I'm 31. I was also having terrible gut issues at that time as well which I also believe to be related to my hormones being out of whack. I have been taking L-glutamine, digestive enzymes, and ibgourd, peppermint oil, every day for my gut health for a few months now as well as using prescription topical spironolactone slash clindamycin cream and my skin is basically clear. I get a couple of hormonal zits at a certain point in my cycle, but it's very minimal now. I've read before, that your gut health is very much so related to acne. I believe healing my gut, was definitely a factor in my skin clearing up. Character Yogurt 11 says. Rokutane. Terrible side effects, but I'd do it all over again, if I had to. Minchok Sandwich says. Flax Seed Gel. Cook 123 says. Acutane. Smash 5167 says. Drinking copious amounts of water. Thoror or says. Cutting back on my skin routine then slowly incorporating it back in. Getting advice on a decent skin routine too from experts, and not just from info online. The middle says. A full spectrum hemp extract salve, aka CBD oil salve, with peppermint and eucalyptus essential oil in it. Look up Rachel Narx's TED talk about the endocannabinoid system, and how much it controls and interacts with every system in our body, which is why cannabis and plant medicine is so powerful. Every pharmaceutical is based on something found in nature, but if nature taught us anything, it's that these medicinal compounds work synergistically together in whole plant medicine form, but so often big pharma isolates one compound, thinking it's the most important. But when combined with its other therapeutic compounds, they work better together. Plus, how do you fight oil? Not with water and harsh cleansers, but with more oil. Edit to add, no, it didn't make my face oily and greasy. It absorbed quickly, and I even still use it as a facial moisturizer. Glad length in a 6695 says. Micronized benzoyl peroxide, like the Effecla Duo from La Roche-Posay, and Differin Gel. 
I recommend starting the micronized benzoyl peroxide first, and I definitely don't recommend using the differin gel without the BP. Saish says. Cleanser. Lali says. Regular bowel movements. Turns out mine was due to constipation. Lumpy Town 4103 says. Rubbing alcohol every night before bed, no need the hassle of washing your face, or using moisturizer cream, also helps with oily skin, just gotta be consistent. Clara Bears at Chinakut says. Raw honey. I saw a post here about 10 years ago from the cystic acne sub and someone suggested she used it to treat her cystic acne, and it worked, so I gave it a try. I would wash my face with cleanser, put a thin layer of raw honey, the bright yellow kind, let it sit for 20 minutes, and then wash off. I did this daily for about 2 months, and it worked for me. I haven't needed to use it outside of when I moved to China and here and there ever since. 2020 has Ganetta shit says. Carnivore diet, or animal based. Quitorquit says. Age. 66 male, I had cystic acne through my teens and still carry the facial scars. Note, sorry if this subreddit is women only. Acne is a real touchy subject with me. It hits home too hard, and I felt compelled to comment. Apologize if I offended. Lofi Inspiracy says. Stopped using products with salicylic acid, they were irritating my skin and perpetuating the cycle of breakouts, and using cetaphil cleansers and moisturizers instead. I also regularly use aloe 2% plus nag 2% solution from The Ordinary and their glycolic acid toner. Schmidaho says. I cut out most refined sugar, and stop drinking milk, aside from milk and cookies occasionally, and starting eating tomatoes more often. The tomatoes are really what did it, the only thing I can think, is I was deficient in some micronutrient that tomatoes have. Eliz says. Tretinoin. Phelps 77 says. Having a baby. I still thank my oldest son for clearing my acne for me. Lol. P. Rogeson Positivity says. Committing to upping my daily water intake. Cutting out chocolate, doing a nighttime face routine, and stopping using a pillow altogether. Old Sal 339 says. Age. And now my skin care routine is usually Vaseline. Aloe vera gel. Rose water. Glycolic acid. Any exfoliating face wash for gentle skin, Pons works best for me. Fancy Response 8016 says. Not having an ounce of candy. No chocolate, no gum, no lollipops, gum is the list goes on. Baketha Spoon says. My 30s. Jugdishqua says. I was on a cutane at least 3 times if not 4, long time ago so can't remember, and it only fixed my acne while on it. I continued to suffer with acne even after taking spironolactone, using tretinoin, etc throughout my life until maybe one month ago, when I finally got off birth control, after over a decade of being on it. r slash ask women. Antonia Leeuwen hoax says. What's the most fun date you've ever been on? Khan said Brakedg says. I was super hungover once. So my friend who hadn't partied the night before came over with some meds and took me out for some hot pot. We walked around the neighborhood for a bit, while I started to feel better, grabbed croissants and coffee on our way back home, and then we just watched a movie together. We had the best conversation that time, he's still my favorite friend, and although it was not romantic at all, it was the most fun date ever. We Castia says. I played soccer in college but this was after college and I'd already, frick, ed up my knee, but I still played for fun with a rec league. Anyway she played in high school, so she was familiar as well. So we just had a little soccer date, kicking around the ball all day, and rolling in the grass. I just remember not wanting the day to ever end. 
by the time it was dark we ended up just driving around listening to music with the windows down and eating snacks from a gas station. We ended up at her place but nothing happened we just fell asleep, cuddled up to each other. Certain songs are still so connected to experiences with her that I have a hard time listening to them now. Molkuk says. We had a nice dinner then played darts, he let me win, had a few drinks, until we were tipsy then went to my favorite park where we talked for a couple of hours while swinging. Anxious Scratch says. Never had a fun date tbh. My anonymity says. The ones that just never end, because you're enjoying yourself so much, that you just hop from place, to place until everything is closed, and you've completely lost track of time. My partner and I still do this often. We find some really cool and fun things all the time. It's hard to pick one. Rapokaman says. My BF took me to laugh for a Jurassic Park concert. We drove there and home. LV, in one day, and it was so fun. Heath Erlewian says. Not the most fun but most memorable, I went on a date with a guy once, and we sat out, and had a picnic by the lake. It was his first date with a girl, and he had some ants crawl onto the blanket and freaked out. I scooped them up with a leaf, and put them off the blanket with a few crumbs to take home. I made a comment, like they are just doing all they know, and he didn't really talk for a while, then texted me, after I went home you know I've never really thought of bugs like that. I think it might change me a lot it didn't work out, but I think it's really neat. I hope it did change him, and I hope he's still nice to bugs. Alyssa Dog says. Going around a Christmas market and a bookshop, probably the best date I have ever had. Thefrin Jed Magoo says. Bowling, it's just so fun. Jsel5 says. Went on a first date to a sports bar, and after a bit ended up striking conversation with three girls next to us. Turns out they're lesbians and two are after the same girl. Good vibes and jokes from them asking about our date and we asking about their situation. Rather than stepping away I encourage the banter. The night slowly progresses and escalates by itself. We all ended up at a strip club and my date with a stripper gave me a lap dance. We all got so drunk and had so much fun, me and my date passed out in my car and nothing happened. Woke up and drove straight to work after dropping her off at her car. Never had a date quite like that again. We went out a few times after and it didn't pan out. Far Independence 918 says. Went out to lunch with friends. Went axe throwing with same friends, and played pinball for hours. Then out to a nice dinner, and did an escape room just the two of us. We've been married for 24 years. And we still, have a blast doing impromptu dates, only the lunch was planned that day. Celestialism says. I honestly feel like it's not about the place slash activity because any kind of date will stand out as a fun memory if it's with someone you feel comfy with and have fun with. That being said my spouse and I will sometimes do what we call a high-low date where we dress up and go for dinner at a super fancy restaurant and then immediately go to a much more low-key thing like an improv or stand-up show. I love the best of both worlds ness of it, and how fun it feels to be the two most overdressed people in the room. Kitten Machine 69 says. We went to Garfield Park Conservatory, which has a fern room and a cactus room. I love fern rooms, because they are soft, and make me think of dinosaurs, but succulents are an entirely different type of sensory pleasure point even. Though there are little signs that say, don't touch the cacti, when it was just us two, I gently booped the little needles of various sizes and shapes and giggled a lot. He thought this was very funny. He bought me Palestinian food later, and let me tell him about UFOs. In return, he told me about his time as a medical doctor in Louisiana, his family members in Senegal, racism in healthcare, etc. Really interesting person. Down the Grappavine says. We played Jugger. If you don't know what it is. We had foam swords and shields, and played to steal a foam cylinder row from the other team. 
I married that man. Gonzoiskid says. I went on some really exciting first date hikes. A couple got pretty hairy, but we made it. Attention Logical 3113 says. Slip and slide with my BF. A Shenskiller says. Private women only play party felt really comfortable, and had a great night plus I got to try fire play which was exciting, not something I'd do again, but it was fun to try. Dark Environmental says. Many golf while drinking. Ambitious Event 5911 says. 1996 Pacific Beach in St. Ego. Got some rolled tacos. Jumped in the waves. Had a smoke. Life was good. Married him. Jigglebox06 says. About a week after we met, we met up for lunch on Saturday, and while we were talking he asked if I wanted to go to New Orleans. We live maybe 1.5 hours away. I said sure, so we got in the car and drove to the city. I called my friend who offered to let us stay with her that night. We went to dinner and got drinks. We bought some art from street vendors. I remember it was just so fun, the conversation was so good as we were sitting at a bar, engulfed in each other, a stranger interrupted to ask how long we had known each other. She assumed we were married, and had known each other a long time. We went to another bar later with one of those internet jukeboxes, and spent all night singing, and laughing and having an incredible time. I think we went back around point 4. Am. Um, crashed and drove home a few hours later. It was just magical. We are currently divorcing, and I think about that night a lot. He literally texted me about it yesterday, and it breaks my heart. Dr. Fiance says. We were in uni together. He liked me, I knew it, but he hadn't proposed yet. One night he rings me up, to go for a long drive across the countryside. I immediately said yes, and it turned out, to be the best night out ever. We made multiple pit stops for ice cream and fuel. The fun part was the fact, that this shy boy who was so scared to look me in the eye during our classes together was intently staring into my eyes the whole time, watching me blabber away about something. I knew then he was in love with me, wow. I too felt safe and content with him around. So this memory of that night, has to be by far the best date I have ever been on. r slash ask women. Princess Jellyfish 17 says. What percentage of your day is spent being alone, or doing things alone? Like not having other friends or family in the same room or around you, going shopping or doing activities on your own, eating by yourself, etc. I'm just curious what other people's lives are like. Celestialism says. Like 97% of it, which is my preference usually. My brain works better with lots and lots of introvert time. Yeah Misty Rear 7119 says. As much as I want, usually 95%. Ancient Blueberry 384 says. All day, every day sadly. Unemployed and live in an apartment now, so it's awful. No partner, no friends, no family. The Dead Said says. 95%. I'm temporarily in a small town, where there's nothing to do and no one to hang out with. I'm a remote worker, so it's just me, and a computer at a coffee shop. When I lived in Nick it was more like 80% as I liked, being out with friends and doing stuff. OK Resolution 748 says. Unfortunately, not enough of it. Footdust says. A solid 85%. When my only child leaves for college in August, that will bump up to 95%. I'm so lonely. Dissipuses says. Three days a week, about zero. I usually get two to three days a week home alone during the day. And I love every minute. Lexi Ibu 97 says. 100% for the most part. It's no wonder that I went stir crazy. I don't feel okay. I hate my agoraphobia. 
the greed Canadianess says. 100% of my non-work time is spent alone. No pets, no friends, no family. Peaches Peaches says. Not enough, I work between hospitals, so I'm pretty surrounded by people and my partner is a big homebody so if I'm home, he's there. I love my alone time and definitely would love more of it. I walk between 40 minutes to an hour home which I consider my daily me time. C Red Scallops says. Not enough, but seriously easily 70% of the time. Leilunia says. 100% I live alone. Dripper Boy says. Like 90%, because I'm doing a lot of healing, while I have the time as someone who has recently quit their job. Fascinated by Stander says. I work remote and only talk to my boss and coworker once, or twice a month. I only hang out with my husband and kid. No family around and not really any friends that I would rather spend time with over myself or family. J4321 G4321 says. If I'm working from home, then 100% of my day, if my dog doesn't count. Coffee and Snacks says. Currently 100%, but about 90% a week, if I meet a friend for a drink. Ejina's Milkmaid says. 90, 100%. Loving Benefits says. 70%. Pathos May says. At least half. I prefer being on my own. Accomplished Thai 774 says. On weekdays, perhaps 2h, 3h if I count time to myself in which I'm not comfortable to relax, such as going to work. Kanachos Gang says. At work I share an office with a colleague and work together with a few more people, so I'm almost never alone. After work I always do shopping alone. At home I live with my partner, so I'm never alone for more than like 1, 3 hours, when he does to do his hobby outside of the house. Doesn't mean that we always sit in the same room though. My hobby takes me out of the house, but it involves being around people. A few times a year I go to a new nearby city for a night, to go explore by myself. I think it's important to do stuff by yourself every once in a while. Plus I get to choose where I go without having to ask anybody. Previously when I lived alone I spent most weekdays after work alone in my apartment. Down the grapper Vin says. HMM if it's a work day, and I'm at the office then I'd say like 10% of the time, I live with my husband and we command together. If I'm working from home, or he's not at home, we are usually together in the living room, then I'd say 80% of the day, until he comes home and we are, again, in the same room together. Void Questioner says. Apart from the gym almost every morning. All weekdays, and some weekends. Anna Maria says. A solid 85, 95% depending on the week. I live alone and work from home. I go into the office once, or twice a week. My parents live close by, and I see them maybe once a week. Sometimes catch up with friends. The amount of time I spend with other people really does pale in comparison to the amount spent alone. Drunk Enkmata says. I work from home. So I'm alone from 8 to 4, unless I have Zoom meetings scheduled that day. On the weekends I'll go for a walk or on errands alone, unless someone wants to join me. Miss Xeralist says. 90. Sunday Mama 4952 says. 97%. Bittersweet 9798 says. I would say 50, 60% of my day I spent alone. But turn up squash 444 says. 80%. No knowledge 2765 says. When I'm not talking to my friend at work or my brother, I pretty much spend most days alone but nothing wrong with so. I'd say 8 hours go to social and the rest is just in my room, or walking outside, when it isn't too hot. Sgg Cupcakes says. Pretty much always. 
unless I go to the office, on average 3x a week, or have rare social plans, every couple weeks or even less often, I spend my time alone. Grites Chow 111 says. 70%? Morning I'd be at my parents though I'm mostly in my bedroom, while they are in their bedroom. My partner would be at work, I'll head back to our house after lunch. Then he'd be back at night, I'd sometimes be in the bedroom alone, and he's in the living room on YouTube. Then we spend the time, before sleeping in the bedroom together watching shorts, him, slash tiktoks, me, then hug to sleep. Weekends would be more 30% alone, since my partner's home. Ludiculous says. Around 80%. Lentil5 says. Close to none. I'm alone tonight for the first time in ages, and it feels fantastic, my kids are in the house, but they are asleep. Usually I have a kid or two literally on me, and a husband who kinda hovers in the same room, and is also sometimes on me. I love them dearly, but it's all getting to be too much. Terayoku31 says. Anytime I'm not at work. I live and work in a country different to my family, and I'm an introvert. So I prefer doing things alone, even when I'm out and about. Rookstorn says. Not enough. I don't remember the last time that I was home alone. The last three times I've gone to get a PD, my daughter has joined. I'm not complaining as I want her to be pampered too. Even if I go to the store I usually have someone tagging along. My car ride to work is usually spent listening to a meeting. Or catching up with my mom and sister. R slash ask women. So power says. What did you notice changed in a relationship before things ended? What were the signs that when looking back was showing a clear lack of interest or things falling apart? Real Brooke Schwartz says. He pointed out that we hadn't spoken or communicated at all in three days. I hadn't noticed. Another time, we just started fighting more and more, and I eventually told him that we couldn't have discussions beyond superficial things, because we'd just end up arguing. Thrower or says. He started nitpicking at little things I would say, or do or things I had said in the past, and began twisting them to mean something negative. Majority, if not all of it, was stuff I'd said at face value, but we'd enter into half an hour long conversations, where he would pull apart what I'd said, put new words into my mouth, and then not listen to me, when I said, that that wasn't what I'd meant. It didn't help that early on he'd suggested, that we not talk to our friends about our issues, but then towards the end of the relationship he began talking to his friends and they would, naturally, validate his feelings. So I was made out to be an even worse person. Employee Potential 622 says. I slowly went from looking forward to our future together to dreading the idea of it. It was a shift from feeling happy in the relationship to feeling trapped in it. After we moved in together, I started to realize slash notice all the ways he tried to control me and how it was about power and not about love. I realized how much I needed time away from him, when I suddenly didn't have any. I started to be mean to him, what I realize now was in hopes, that he would take me leaving better. That he would see it more as mutual than as my decision. It was also my way of testing the boundaries of everything I hated about our relationship. Natia Ravarajabi says. I was happier, when we weren't in communication. And when he touched me, I did that sort of shiver in disgust, like I was crawling out of my skin. t 3 says. His contempt for me. Every interaction had some sort of annoyance or hostility toward me. When I finally called him out, he didn't even care to defend himself. Just sat there with his head down and took it. Knew it was over in that moment. Still on a whisper says. First long term relationship. Together 6.5. Yes. We had kids super young and the last 2 to 3 years he just didn't want to do anything as a family, didn't want to go on dates, didn't want to do much other than come straight home and get on his computer. No romance, no desire, not even any motivation 
to be a part of a family, so I spent about the last year working up the courage to break it off. We are both better people bc we parted ways, and after some road bumps in cooperating straight out the gate, have been very friendly in the last 4 to 5 years. Strong Wheels says. She started looking sorry for me. I was becoming the problem. Thetra Shipanda says. The distance was growing wider, it seemed like. It seemed like I was getting pushed out, getting shorter and shorter responses to things, and dodging answers. Also, him becoming more, and more selfish with intimacy. This guy ended things over a text, and it was ambiguous, if it was a breakup text or a shift in relationship text. Biochambish says. I started becoming attracted to other people that aren't even that attractive. That's enough of a sign for me that I want out. Azoriska says. I actually didn't notice anything since I was having a high due to my bipolar, but the day he asked for a break, when I went to go touch him his whole body tensed up so badly that his arm felt hard we also didn't really have sex often and the last time we did it felt very awkward after, and I felt gross, but didn't know why. Later on that day he said he felt we needed a break. Imlil he says. I think when I suggested that we should have a break. Should have broken up right there and then. Starfish 12345678 says. When we weren't physically together, and he would message to say he didn't have time to call, I'd feel relief that we wouldn't have to speak that day. Horror Desk says. At the start he was very thoughtful and romantic, always texting me photos that reminded him of me, or bringing me pretty shells and interesting rocks. But as time went on it was like he couldn't be bothered. I know romantic gestures wane. But he became disinterested in all our plans, acting like he was on autopilot or something. I ended up planning not only his, but also my birthday entirely by myself with no input from him. When I broached the subject he protested that he had no money, but I don't want anything expensive, I just want to feel special to him again. He promised me he would plan something special for our 2 year anniversary, but when the day came he had clearly forgotten. After our breakup shortly, after he confessed that by then he'd already checked out and didn't think it was worth it, slash. Ray CL says. For me, I noticed he stopped inviting me to his place after we had a weekly hangout with friends at a restaurant. This went on for a month. Looking back now it was fairly obvious we were going to break up. This started when I found out I got a job in another state. Initially he was willing to do long distance, and then he changed his mind. Chef Puddle says. Not having time for me, because he was too busy, but still having time for his gym slash hobbies slash friends. Loving Benefits says. It was the lack of respect of my things on his end and I started feeling unsatisfied in bed, and in the relationship. I am the Fi says. I was lying to him about my whereabouts, while all I was doing, was spending time by myself, stress free. Mayadoff Thessia says. It usually starts with a sudden change in communication. Suddenly my partner will be more closed off, and vague about what's going on in their life, and seem to be putting distance between us. Feeling less connected during sex. Getting a feeling I'm only being told half truths. Without communication and trust, the relationship ends soon after. That's what your said 99 says. He accepted Jesus into his heart. Ancient Inkut says. From his end, lack of interest slash avoidance of building a future together. Leaving the apartment for long periods to clear his head. From my end, I started getting very emotionally drained before eventually just numbing out. I also began hoping he wouldn't be there when I got home from work. Ida Canamore 34 says. Disinterest. Joking about hating me lol. Talking about the future alone etc hated being around me. You can feel the animosity emo. Mached Potato 331 says. It took him hours to reply to any of my messages, 
but was on his phone constantly when we were together, texting other people, especially his best friend's sister. In fact, he and I would finish in bed and he would immediately roll over and start texting this other girl. He also refused to tell her that we were engaged for like 3 months afterward because he was worried about the reaction good riddance on Fayo. Comp ask 7506 says. The interactions. The lack of trust. It will be even more obvious at times of intimacy. I mess our way to be harsh, but shit goes downhill like we ye. Or a sweet says. He seemed utterly disinterested in me, except when he wanted to, frick me. He started falling asleep with his phone in his pocket, as opposed to leaving his phone on the table slash nightstand. I felt anxious, and cried all the time I should've left sooner instead of trying to make it work. R slash ask women. Chris Dilslover says. What comes your anxieties when it comes to dating? We all know relationship anxiety well, how do you combat it? Glam Butter says. It probably won't work out so why be anxious in the first place? Kakashi Sith says. Nothing. I just one back quote t do it. Dear Michael Logistical says. I remind myself that whatever traits you feel insecure about, there's someone out there with those traits who's happily partnered, and someone out there without those traits who's unhappily single. You think you're not pretty enough. There are people less conventionally attractive than you who are partnered, and people more conventionally attractive than you who are single not by choice. You think you're not outgoing enough. There are people less outgoing than you who are partnered, and people more outgoing than you who are single not by choice. Goosebaripinipal says. Clear and open communication. Loving Benefits says. My love language is physical touch. It also comes me. Sharkweak says. Being optimistic as possible lol. No Knowledge 2765 says. That I'm going to mess it up somehow, I just try to remind myself to breathe. Spiritual1126 says. Don't date. Not Chris Forges says. Honestly sometimes I prefer leaving the topic for later, but not forget about it. I know it doesn't sound well, to ignore a topic, that may cause anxiety, but most of the time all I need, is just love from my boyfriend, in love to be calm. He's genuinely amazing at being loving, it's the only thing, that calms me in general, since feeling loved is actually wonderful. We always discuss a conflict, but I always prioritize softening the situation, before speaking about the conflict, or so I try. That's what works for me. Sakida Kikakai I says. Alcohol, gets me out of my head. Admiri says. High self esteem, and being a secure individual. Great communication, maturity, and having an easy going personality helps a lot. Scout Lovasaticus says. Taking a breath. Reminding myself of the other things in my life aside from the new guy, and spending time focusing on these things. It helps me remember what other things make me happy, and equally a bad day or bad experience happens irrespective of being in a relationship. It helps me recenter, take the pressure of thinking I'm unhappy why am I unhappy if I'm in a relationship? Is it him, and communicating my needs? I don't apologize for them. They are what they are, and regardless of being anxious of judgment or rejection I just say what I need, space, better communication from them, different communication, reassurance, whatever they are, they are valid and, when I just communicate them simply I've mostly had great experiences with guys, the good you ends, responding with oh sure. I'm glad you told me that. Ladilamondrop209 says. As in the early stages of being in a relationship? Keep myself busy I usually go through a stage of huge personal improvement cause I'm keeping my mind from spiraling and obsessing slash overthinking by working on myself lol. I'll get a lot better at piano, yoga, drawing, cardio, everything. Adventure House 77 says. 
finding out where it all starts, whether it's something I can handle on my own or something to discuss with my partner. Acknowledging that relationships need effort, which helps you both grow together, and knowing who you are as a couple. My partner should be someone I find peace and escape with and that is enough to calm all my anxieties. Comfigeral ask 7506 says. The way my man handles the situation, and when he has a positive aura, the negative vibe gonna get nullified. So anyways says. He's just a man. If this doesn't work out there will be others. Nora Wilder says. Two habits change the game for me. One. Be the chooser mentality, I went into every date assuming I'm this dude's dream girl. Literally, that was the only reality. And I needed to decide if I liked him. 2. I met a guy with really good texting habits, and I took his cue. We would always communicate to each if we had to go offline, or wouldn't be able to text back for a while. Simple and effective. He and I didn't last for larger reasons, but it's something I'll take with me to the next one. Arx Mrs. says. My anxieties kind of show up from deeper, rooted things in my life, thank god for therapy for recognizing them. Having lived the majority of my life emotionally neglected, I historically had a difficult time accepting, or even recognizing any kind of care or interest from people, I mean, I still kind of do haha. It often felt disingenuous or a little sus. I've gotten much better with that. Knowing I'm lovable, and deserving of care and love. But in the past few years I've discovered a deeper need for communication, especially emotionally. I don't want to have to guess, I spent the majority of my life guessing with emotionally neglectful people, walking on eggshells with their unpredictability. Some of the people I have been with romantically struggled very heavily with this kind of communication. It was like talking to a wall, completely disconnected. I knew. Through therapy, I couldn't assume and internalize the energy I was given, so I'd ask or try to lead a discussion with an open floor. Now my anxiety sits in the possibility of falling in love with another person who can't express their thoughts and feelings to some capacity. We I I I I I I I I says. Not dating. Down the Grapavine says. Well depends on what you're anxious about but mostly, before I got married, I reminded myself that they are so lucky to be spending time with me and I'm a frick, I'm catch. R slash ask women. Redrosses says. What home workout do you do when you have your period? Pathos May says. Scotch hot water bottle, add the lud villain trash TV. Stenergeral216 says. I crush this workout. Brendan Wolf says. I stick to yoga and easy stretching. Feels good and helps with cramps. Spiritual1126 says. Walking to the shower. Jokes. I remember my school pet teacher said exercise helps periods. But it feels so gross and painful to exercise. If I do maintain my regular exercise, capoeira, then I make sure to wear black compression pants. Also, why do so many martial arts think wearing white pants is a good thing? Heavy Assignment 612 says. Period cramps, can't walk. Bugsin Mippens says. I do this thing called rotting in bed. Intelligence Up 88 says. Lifting the bar of chocolate to my mouth. Cannot control those cravings, but on a more serious note, my periods are light, have an IUD, so I run, and swim as normal. Artemi Ice says. I go to the gym as usual. Galaxy Re says. Rotting in bed for the first day or two, and talking light walks. Thrower or says. Nothing on my own app, if I'm not dying from cramps I'll try to get some yout of yoga in, or go for a walk, if that counts as at home. Might be able to do some glutes workouts by day 2. When I'm up to date 3 to 4 of my period I'll work in some ab slash core workouts, but only if I'm up for it. The Arthur Lud says. I work out as usual. 
maybe won't do leg day on my heaviest day and do more cardio. Sunshine3072 says. Suck it up and still go to the gym. Gel009 says. I do this thing called lying down on my bed slash couch. Inida glow up 2021 says. Rotting on bed. Cold morning coffee says. Actually, cleaning the house in the morning. I never feel like doing workouts, but I will sweep, mop, scrub, tidy, take out trash, dust, take things upstairs and basement, etc. For a few hours over the weekend and actually feel better not only about moving around, but my house then being clean. The evening relaxation is 10x better, when I'm not surrounded by clutter, or the lurking dread of dishes, I can binge watch TVD and rot in peace on the couch. Seely Red says. Walking. Malethoral says. I still go to the gym. I'm usually the only one using it at 6am in my apartment complex. Indigo263 says. I work out how to get most comfortable, and then stay like that until the painkillers kick in. Antigone Electra says. Frankly, my regular programming is still a go. Working out helps me feel better. Makaloko says. It depends. My period isn't usually bad, so I will just do my usual, but if I'm feeling especially tired then I will just do yoga or something light. At excellent 7055 says. Crying in bed, or hobbling around holding my stomach in pain the first day or two. Tricera Quake says. I don't. I'm allowed to not do shit when I'm on my period. If my 800 milligrams of Advil has kicked in, and I'm feeling pretty good, I might go wander around Target. If not, it's hot pad, streaming, and some kind of sweet treat. Liver Register 6195 says. Back and forths. To the fridge, and back for chocolate and Milo. Rocking in bed. Gets the gluten going, and distracts from the pain. Thalastmo freaking says. I lift the chips to my mouth one at a time, you can really feel the burn. Newt Flacky says. I mean opening a 80% dark chocolate green and black bar is exercise enough. Vanilla Rose 33 says. You know that trick that parents do to get babies to fart? That because I'm gassy. Princess Soft Pandas 28 says. Light walks or yoga. But I usually just rest. Caligral 6441 says. If I have to work out, it's one hour on the treadmill, it's zero incline, going about three miles per hour. Sarai Amnazi says. Absolutely nothing. My anonymity says. Long walks outside, when the flow is light and the weather is good. Arm weights and planks. Nothing to spread why. Impossible frame 913 says. Runny more at wall billets. OK advantage 3180 says. Other than moving my arm to grab another crisp or piece of chocolate, nothing. Shigelilla224 says. Walking. Avoidance says. None. They've been getting increasingly painful over the years, the latest few, so extreme that I threw up a few times immediately after taking a painkiller. I found that the only way for me to reduce the pain, even just a little, is to lay down and not move a muscle. Cassia Pellier 18 says. Billets. Delicious Stock 4659 says. I don't make a difference, and do the same type of workouts I do, when I'm not on my period. Mimedilum says. I work out arms and back the first two days. I can lift heavier on my period, so I don't want to miss that window. Russian B4B says. I just work out as usual, I don't like laying around too much. Usually I do yauta but home stuff. Newtel4197 says. Fetal position and heating blanket. So first I warm up the heating blanket. Next I secure a place on the couch. 
usually it's the lounge. Then I curl up in a tight fetal position with my Kindle at ready to read all day. Finally I take the heating blanket and roll myself up in it like a burrito and place a pillow strategically against my abdomen to hold the heating blanket in place. I'm doing this right now early morning gains. Aesthetic Juices says. Dizzy moves it's a special regime. Lovast6211 says. My cramps are so bad for the first day to the point I can't move, even if I want to. Secret Musician8485 says. I'm a jazzercise gal, and I usually just switch to low impact for anything cardio on my heavy days. Luckily as I've gotten older, the cramps are down to a level of barely annoying as opposed to debilitating when I was in my 20s and 30s, but the heavy flow is just out of control. Peaches and Cream 2467 says. I still do my normal walking and stair step routine. It helps with cramps and seems to help my period end faster. Apostate 456 says. I don't change my workouts based on my period. R slash ask women. Ok Babastic says. Is there ever a good reason to break a promise? What reason could it be? We all make promises, but sometimes circumstances change. What do you think? Is it ever justifiable to break a promise? International Lalia 2918 says. Life happens. People change. Breaking a promise is okay, if that promise starts to go against who you have evolved into. People make religious promises, then lose their faith. People make promises to stay with their partner, but then the partner becomes abusive. People promise to show up to an important event, and then an emergency slash illness happens. We should always try to honor our promises to the best of our abilities, so we are reliable and trustworthy. Jada for the 12 says. If keeping the promise hurts someone else is pretty good to me. Sifero8701 says. I promise I won't tell anyone if you're serious about hurting or killing yourself. Honolul says. Non-consensual promises. Promises that were made out of coercion, threats, inhibition, lies, or naivety are not valid. A promise is a contract. If you make a promise, when you're of sound mind, you should follow through. And if you want to break a valid promise, that makes you an asshole. Direct Drawing 8557 says. The other person isn't holding their end of their bargain. You made the promise, while drunk slash horny slash, in love and circumstances changed. Whiffleball says. If it's going to cause more harm than good. Delicious Detail 118 says. If you don't fully know what you are promising. Cheekmo52 says. If keeping the promise would endanger someone. If the promise was extracted from you under duress. If the promise was made under false pretenses. White Devil 1995 says. For love. Zakipergamino 719 says. If you are having to make promises as an adult, in general red flags. Human decency, respect, understanding, compromise shouldn't be contingent on promise keeping. Promises to never abuse, cheat, theft, etc. Shouldn't have to be had, these are all things you shouldn't do regardless of promises. Flexibility, boundaries, and change shouldn't be hindered by promises either. Promise to your parents to never leave, but getting an out of country opportunity. A parent is out of line to accept or allow such a promise. If it's a promise under duress, if I make you promise something. I already doubted your follow through and need verbal confirmation to fall back on when you fail. Too long, didn't read, promises after the age of 12 are goofy. Jictus says. Honestly yes there's valid reasons. But I think that sometimes naturally it happens. Life happens. Things we can't predict. I've definitely bad, but we are human. I think if you have good intentions don't beat yourself up. Venture Edit says. 
to avoid unnecessary grievous hurt and injury or to avoid shattering someone's hopes, convinced to which makes them a better person irrespective of the impact of the promise. Nevert really says. Probably many of them, tbh. For me, if circumstances have changed such that keeping slash breaking the promise has entirely different consequences than those originally accepted slash anticipated, then I feel like you aren't necessarily bound by it. If the contract promise is no longer an accurate reflection of the consequences of fulfilling that promise, then I think it's fine to acknowledge that and change your decision. The Crimson Chariot says terms of the promise are no longer applicable and thereby no longer bound by the contract. Thus due to this change in circumstances, the promise is thus null and void. So Ked Kola says. If the promise was stupid and you wised up. Snap says. There are infinite number of good reasons to break a promise. The situation may have changed drastically, keeping the promise might cause severe harm to someone. Keeping the promise might produce the exact result that making the promise was trying to avoid. Person making the promise might not have had all the information necessary make that decision, or it may have simply become impossible to keep the promise. Every promise basically comes with an asterisk that says, within reason, as they should. Miss Ochikin says, no one ever needs to be justified to break a promise. You can't force someone to go through with something, just because they don't have a good enough reason not to. Zombanthony Bjrillian says. Once I promised to break promises. I'm stuck. Please send help. Interesting Risk 676 says. If someone confided in me that they were thinking of harming themselves or someone else. I might promise to not say anything to their face, but I would definitely call authorities. Her gracefulness 28 says. When I realize that keeping the promise is hurting me or is hindering me from healing properly. Flotsam 71 says. If you overlooked an important factor supporting making that promise and it will put you in danger or cost you a lot of money that you cannot afford, yes, it is okay to break a promise, SND feel free to explain why. Oddly Necessary says. Don't believe in keeping that promise anymore. Waiting for God it says. You gotta do what the magic 8 ball says. So, if you don't want to break a promise, don't ask it if you should. Ninavijus says. No. Can't. Boobadadumamu says. Three years ago in college I promised my roommate that I would be a surrogate for her one day because her severe endometriosis has made her unable to conceive. We lived together for two years and were inseparable and I truly thought she was my platonic soulmate. After she graduated, I had one more semester, but we stopped living together, and she just stopped communicating with me. I tried to see her, and I even planned a weekend for us to spend together. During that weekend it was the most tense and awkward time of my life, and I wept after she left. She wasn't the person I remembered, and I mourned the closeness we once had. I still care for her deeply, but I'm no longer willing to put my body through a pregnancy for her. Illicit Adora says. When the consequences of keeping the promise are far greater than the consequences of breaking it. Frick Mikhail says. If you were forced or guilted into it, if it will cause you or someone else pain, or put you in danger, if the criteria to set the promise has completely changed out of your control. Elemental Surprise says. I could think of several. The promise was made under duress. Someone was forcing you into the promise the promise was made without all the information available to you, and there's new information that changes your promise the promise was made under false pretenses i.e. someone lied to you outside factors forced you to break the promise. Like you promised to go camping this weekend, but then there's a thunderstorm. Circumstances change. Maybe your ability to keep the promise changed. Like you promised to go to a wedding, but your car breaks down and you no longer have transportation. Or you have transportation, but can no longer afford it, because you have to fix your car. Something that needed to be a priority came up. Astral Fee says. 
if you promise to keep a secret for a friend, but the secret turns out to be that they are being abused. Specifically if you're minors. Dear Michael Logistical says. Of course. If you couldn't ever break a promise under any circumstances, then making a promise would be such a big risk that hardly anyone would ever make promises in the first place. For example, if you promise to lend someone money, but then the next day you lose your job, if you promise to drive a friend to the airport, but then your kid gets the flu, and there's no one else available to take care of them, if you vow at your wedding to love your spouse until one of you dies, but years later you're really unhappy in the marriage, and no longer love them. R slash ask women. Greener9423 says. How do you manage with being outcasted by judgment? How do you manage dealing with judgment from everyone for your lifestyle and or choices that don't concern, or put them in harm? Then when you say something to them, they act as if they don't know what you're talking about, or they try to defend other people's judgment towards you. Melanchula Bean says. Depends on who they are. Who do you to judge by? Mayomkis89 says. You don't need to convince anyone of anything, ever. Life is short. Don't spend it thinking about what others may be thinking. It consumes too much time and capacity. It's freeing to reclaim that time for yourself. When I find myself doing this, I remind myself and pick up my hobby. Joyful Suicide says. Ask myself if I want this person in my life. If yes, strike up a conversation about it. If not, bye. Yabin Robechi says. You tell them okay well you can kiss the fattest part of ass as you watch me move past you. Jina Kirsch says. Gotta say thanks to all of these comments. I had gotten into that Jaff energy back in 21, 22, but a lot of stuff has happened in my life since. I need to do that again. The comments reminded me of how good that felt, regardless of the judgments I got for it, to answer your question, I'm currently struggling with this as I really dislike when someone is saying something false about me to others. But I'm aware, that people will judge you anyway regardless of what you do, so might as well enjoy yourself. On the text says. Everyone is entitled to choose who they want around, they simply decided you are their cup of tea. I wouldn't take it personal, I have dropped friendships for my own reasons, so I would expect some people to drop me for their own reasons. Peely Sweetcakes says. I put them on information diets and find people who are more accepting of me. I've gotten the whole degree I didn't tell my family about because I didn't want to hear their digs about my choice of study or take bets on if I'd finish like they did in undergrad. I got the dean's list every quarter, but they have no idea. I know it's kind of petty, but succeeding in secret gives me ever more powerful feeling than chasing their validation ever did. Like, they don't appreciate who I am, so they don't get to take part in my success or happiness. I keep it for myself, and share it to the people who think I'm amazing when I'm not doing anything at all to earn it. Now, I do things just to see what kind of shit they will say because I've gotten the strength through validating myself. I'm getting a shag cut tomorrow before I go see my family this weekend and I know I'm going to be called an attention seeking liberal so hard and they are going to hate going out with me. It's going to be hilarious. Kanchas3r43 says. I tell them that they can financially contribute to me stopping whatever I'm doing, or they can, frick off. My bills are not paid by the opinions of others. People have judged me my entire life, I have been told by many that I'm a weird person, but instead of trying to conform, like I did in the past, I no longer care. They will judge me no matter what. So I'm going to live how I want and give those judgy ass people the finger, literally and figuratively. Lemon Cake PLZ says. There's a scene in Lion King, where Sarah B walks through the Higginess with her chin, held high and unafraid. Do that. Paradox Off Meat says. I feel really bad about it, and try to forget it, but then I come up with ideas, 
to try and change myself so that they won't judge me anymore and then I feel miserable about that because I shouldn't do that when all I'm doing is just wanting to be happy but I also don't want to disappoint people and their expectations in me so I try to be quiet and acquiescent to what they want without actually changing anything about myself and hope that that will be enough for them to leave me alone but I'll constantly be worrying that they are going to say something judgmental again. I'm not a very strong person. Odd Yogurt 8786 says. I choose which friends I share certain information with and surround myself with people I'm safe with. I have a few friends that are more narrow minded in life. I still love them, but I choose not to share everything about my life with them. Then I have other friends who I can tell everything to. If they are not friends of mine, then I simply don't care. I keep in mind, I don't like everyone on the planet so not everyone is going to like me. And that's just simply okay. I'm not their type of person and they are not mine. Demonic Joel Cox says. I just stop interacting with those people. I found it to be really easy actually. People who don't respect me and my life don't get to be a part of it. Ashenskula says. I'm a lesbian satanist, I'm used to it and it just doesn't bother me. Gonzoiskid says. I could give a freak. I'm a good person with a happy life. Get on my level, or get out my way. Aunt says. I'm still figuring that out. My family being supportive helps more than you know. Slamming Mama says. Whatever. I'm who I am. Someone's label of me isn't who I am, and I don't let it define me. Not doing that says. If we aren't friends, you ain't financing, feeding, or, frick, I'm me, your opinions mean, frick, all to me. Other people's opinions of me is not my business. As long as they don't start nothing, there won't be nothing. I don't need everyone to like me, I know I'm a real OT carrot TM. But you will give me basic human respect or you're gonna get that energy right back at you. And you have to have shame to feel it, and I don't. Nevert really says. I stop engaging with those people who consider me outcast and judge me for things that aren't their business. Carefully Thrifty says. Two options. If it's people whose opinion I care about then I'll evaluate it and either adjust my lifestyle or not depending on the result of my evaluation. From other people I simply ignore it. Subject Kirky 8 says. I heard something once that went along the lines of there are a thousand versions of you out there in people's minds. Everyone you meet will have their own impression of you, sometimes based solely on their lived experiences and biases. You live one life. You'll waste years trying to make everyone else happy. Be who you want to be. Jojo Likes Bikes says. By continuing to lead my best gay ass life. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.